The new M5 MacBook Pro is one of the best laptops Apple has ever released, with a powerful M5 chip, all-day battery life, lots of ports, and amazing display. But if you are using the MacBook Pro straight out of the box, you are missing out because there's some easy things you can do to make macOS and its new liquid glass user interface a much better user experience, like customization options, window management, quick shortcuts, and so much more. So here are the first 20 things to do with your new MacBook. Pro or really any Mac. Like you don't have to actually own the new M5 MacBook Pro to use most of these features. So even if you're on a MacBook Air or a Mac desktop, stick along for the ride. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously to customize your Mac. And there's a lot new here with Mac OS Tahoe on the M5 MacBook Pro. To start, let's go to system settings by clicking the Apple icon on the top left of the display and then clicking system settings from the drop down menu. Then we're going to select the appearance setting and then from here, we're going to want to change our icon and widget style to your personal preference, either with the normal icon mode, which will keep everything the same, so you're not really changing anything, or a dark mode, which will change all of the icons to this new dark appearance. You also have the tinted icon mode that will change the appearance of all of your app icons to a specific color. And when you're selecting these options, you can also enable them in light or dark mode or select auto dark mode, which automatically switches from light mode in the morning to dark mode at night. Furthermore, in the tinted option, you can also select from the pre-selected color options or choose a color where you can specifically adjust the color sliders, or you can even use the color picker option, which gives you a color color selection tool, which is actually pretty cool because you can pick a color from literally anything on your screen, including your wallpaper, whatever apps are open, uh, a website, or even like the stoplight controls on Mac OS. Now you can take this customization even further by changing the theme color. Now by default, this is set to a multicolor option, but if you really want to theme your Mac, you can select from just one color. So you can select from blue, purple, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, or graphite. And then this will change the theming of Mac OS in a lot of different areas. So for example, if I pick yellow, which is one of my favorite themes to pair with like the blue uh, Tahoe wallpaper, well, you can see the sliders, the controls, the system settings, and the toggles. Well, all of these areas of Mac OS now are color coded to that yellow highlight. So this is actually a really cool feature if you're trying to theme Mac OS. After that, let's go ahead and change how our clock looks on the lock screen. So to do this, scroll down to the wallpaper section in settings, then click on clock appearance. Now there's a few different font options to choose from. And then once you select your font, you'll also get a slider to show how thin or thick the font on the clock appears. Now, while your M5 MacBook Pro does come with a pretty decently sized 4.2 inch display, it can still feel pretty cramped at times when you're multitasking with lots of apps. However, there's actually a way to get more display space on your Mac. To do this, let's go to settings, let's click on the displays setting, and then from here, you will see a pre-selected set of resolutions, and all you have to do is click on the option that says more space. Now instantly, you'll notice that your app windows, your menu bar, your dock, and your desktop icons have all gotten smaller, which gives you more virtual space on your display. Another thing we're gonna want to enable is battery percentage. It's very hard to tell how much battery life you have left with just this generic icon. So the easiest way to do that is just right click on the battery on the menu bar, and then you're going to see the option to show battery percentage. Just click that, and now you have your battery percentage in the menu bar. Now the new M5 MacBook Pro obviously has great battery life. Apple claims up to 24 hours of usage, but let's be honest, there's always times where you could use a little more, right? Now one way to do this is by enabling low power mode. Again, if you just click on that battery in the top right of your menu bar, you will see the option to enable low power mode just by clicking on it. Now you can enable this automatically by clicking on the battery settings. So just click on battery settings and then on low power mode on the top here, you'll see where it says never click that. Now you'll see there's an option to always have low power mode on, but you can also just set it to only when you're on battery mode and you can even set it to when you're only on the power adapter, which I don't know why you'd want low power mode when you're on a power adapter because you technically have like infinite battery life then, but hey, I guess, Apple giving you the option is always good. Like more options are always good, right? But don't forget, low power mode will throttle your Mac. It will make it slower. It will make it check for mail less often. So only use this setting if you absolutely need to stretch out battery life. But my preferred method to get more battery life is to always pack a battery bank.
And as a content creator, I always need more battery life because I'm constantly working at places like an airport or a cafe, and I hate when you don't have a power outlet nearby, which is why Anchor Prime is my go-to solution. Yes, this is the Anchor Prime 26,000 milliamp hour, 300 watt power bank, and it is powerful enough to fast charge a MacBook Pro. And this is part of Anchor's most premium flagship charging products, Anchor Prime. The industry leading 300 watt, multi-port fast charging power bank. And it's not just powerful enough to charge one laptop, it's powerful enough to charge two with dual 140 watt USB-C ports. So I can literally charge my MacBook Pro and my iPad Pro at the same time at full charging speeds. And I even have power left over on the USB-A port to fast charge my iPhone 17 Pro. So this isn't just the ultimate power bank for your MacBook, it is the ultimate power station for all of your devices. And you would think with such massive capacity on the power bank, it would take forever to recharge, but no, with dual port inputs at 250 watts, you can charge this giant battery capacity to 40% in just 10 minutes of charging. Yeah, that's not a typo. Look at how fast the battery percentage is going up in real time. And it gives you the maximum battery capacity allowable while still being travel safe so you can take it on an airplane. It also has a smart screen display so you can see how fast you're charging your devices. And it even has an app so you can monitor your devices and even customize the exact charge charging speeds. So never run out of battery life on your laptop, your phone, your camera, or really anything with a USB-C port. And check out the link in the description to pick up your own Anchor Prime power bank. And thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this video. All right, let's come out of system settings for a bit to show off some more customization options. And that all starts with the new control center where you can find right here in the top right of the menu bar. Now by default, a few frequently used macOS controls will just pop up automatically, but you can actually edit this to include a lot of different options. To do this, simply click on the bottom button that says edit controls. From here, you'll find various macOS controls and possibly some controls from third-party applications that you have installed. So it's really up to you to go through this list and pick which quick controls you want in your control center. However, I will give you my favorite controls built right into macOS, and that one would be adding a quick control to hide the dock, which I find really useful when you're trying to make the most out of your limited uh, display space on your laptop, so you can just hide the dock, but then you can also just have it pop back up anytime you click that control. Personally, I also like to do a lot of screen recordings for videos like these, so I also added the ability to quickly record my Mac's display with the record screen control. Now, once you've decided which controls you like in the control center, another thing you can do is just add them to your menu bar for really quick access. To do this, when adding a control, just hit add to menu bar, or if you have an existing control in Control Center, you can right click it and you'll see the same option pop up. And now you're just one click away from your most used controls. You may have noticed in Control Center, there's also a lot of controls for window management, but I'm going to show you a much easier way to manage your windows by utilizing the built-in macOS gestures. So let's say you want two apps side by side. Well, all you need to do is take that window and drag it to either the left or right side of your screen, and you will see that it snaps right into place. Furthermore, dragging apps to the corner of your display will resize them to only take up that corner quarter of the display. So you can have four apps neatly open at once and you can drag an app to the top of the display to quickly enter full screen. If you forget any of these gestures or want more window controls, hover your mouse over any of the green buttons on any of the app windows to find a pop-up of all the windowing options. Okay. Another thing you'll want to get used to on Mac OS is utilizing spotlight search. And there's a lot of ways to bring this up. First of all, it is probably already in your menu bar, like a lot of the controls we're going over. That would be the magnifying glass icon. So if you just press on that, spotlight search will pop up, but you can also access this even quicker by pressing the command key with the spacebar key at the same time. And finally, your new M5 MacBook Pro probably just has a dedicated key for this command. And you can bring that up just by simply pressing the F4 button or key. Now, once you bring up Spotlight, well, you might wanna know what you use it for. Well, basically you use this to search for anything on your Mac, like applications, files, folders, photos, context, settings, pretty much anything on your Mac. And you can even do things like math inside Spotlight. So five plus five equals 10. We didn't need to do five plus five equals 10. I, I knew that it was just, 
kind of like a simple example to show you that you can do math in Spotlight. You can use it as a calculator. Don't believe the rumors. I went to grammar school. I know what five plus five is. Let, let's do another example. 100 times two, 200. See, smart, smart. Anyway, Spotlight, you should use it a lot on your Mac. But there is one thing you'll want to set up that is new in Spotlight that isn't enabled by default and that is clipboard access, which basically lets Spotlight store previous copy and paste items so you can go back and copy and paste it all over again, right? To enable this, just open Spotlight, then drag your cursor and this will reveal four new icons. Click the one all the way to the right, then click enable clipboard search. Now you will be able to see previous copy and pasted items even if you cleared the selection. This works with anything you copy and paste, so text, files, photos, they're all stored right here in this new clipboard. Now, while I love Spotlight on Mac OS Tahoe, it did also kind of get rid of one feature I used to use all the time on Mac OS, and that was Launchpad, which basically popped up a list of all of your installed uh, applications in like a giant grid, almost kind of similar to how the app layout looks on an iPhone or an iPad. Now, this feature has been moved into Spotlight and it does pop up a list of all of your apps in alphabetical order, but in a much smaller grid with no other way to really organize these apps. However, when I use Launchpad, I would usually sort my apps based on when they were added rather than just having them in alphabetical order. So considering I'm kind of used to that, I wanted to search for a solution that was similar. Well, the best method so far that I found without installing any third-party applications is to kind of just add the applications folder to your dock. To do this, just open up Finder, then right-click on the application section, then click Add to Dock. To organize this list, tap these three dots, then select your preferred categorization option. Now, when you just click on the new applications folder in the dock, you will actually get a bigger five by seven grid rather than the smaller four by five grid in the app section with your preferred method of organization. Again, this isn't as good as Launchpad, but it's better than nothing. Now, yes, even with this M5 MacBook Pro, there is still not an option for cellular connectivity yet. But if you're like me, you are a big user of the hotspot feature, which allows you to connect your iPhone to get cellular service right on your Mac. However, one thing that always annoyed me about the hotspot feature was it was always a manual process. However, you can now change that. To do this, click on the Wi-Fi symbol in your menu bar, then click Wi-Fi settings. Then from here, scroll down until you see the option for ask to join hotspots, then click on automatic. Now, whenever there is a nearby available hotspot and you aren't connected to Wi-Fi, your Mac will automatically join that hotspot connection without you having to do anything. This is a great workaround until Apple uh, finally gives us the option for a cellular Mac. Maybe next time. Now, one of the great things about being in the Apple ecosystem is that for years, you could always receive calls on your Mac from your iPhone. However, now with Mac OS Tahoe, you can actually place calls directly on your Mac. To do this, just open up the new phone app and you'll see a list of recent calls, as well as the ability to search for contacts that you wanna call. And then uh, when you search those contacts, you'll obviously see some options there, but you'll see the phone icon, which if you press it, We'll call that person from your Mac. And then if you press the number pad icon near the search bar, it will actually pop up the numeric keyboard that you see on your iPhone. So you can actually just enter the phone number manually right on your Mac. All right, let me show you some gestures you should enable in settings for your trackpad. So to do this, let's go back into system settings, then scroll to the bottom and then select the trackpad settings. Now, the first thing I like to change here is the tracking speed because I find the default setting a little too slow for my liking, but obviously feel free to customize the tracking speed to your own personal preference. I think it's really important when you're using a laptop to get that down. Another thing that might be personal preference is how you activate right-clicking. Now by default on Mac OS, and this is the way I prefer to use it, is you take two fingers, you press them anywhere on the trackpad, and that enables the right click. But I understand a lot of people are switching over from Windows to Mac, and they might be used to just pressing like the right side of the trackpad to enable uh, right click or what Apple calls secondary click. And you can basically change that right here in the settings for your trackpad. So after you pick your preferred right click setting, then let's move over to the gestures tab, which is right here. 
And then from here, you're actually going to want to turn on a feature called App Expose. Now, I prefer to use this setting with the three finger swipe down from the trackpad. Now, App Expose is actually really cool. So anytime you're in an app and let's say you have multiple windows open, well, when you take your three fingers and swipe down from the trackpad, it will now show you all of your open windows neatly organized in a grid view for you to go through and then select which window you want to navigate to, which makes it very easy to multitask even when you have like a bunch of scattered windows open. I find it's a great categorization method for multitasking. I kind of question why Apple doesn't have this setting enabled by default because I use it all the time. But yeah, they have it turned off by default. So I always recommend turning it on. Now, another macOS setting I recommend everyone enable is hot corners. Again, to do this, let's go to settings, then go to the desktop and dock section, then scroll all the way to the bottom and click on hot corners. And by default, you can actually see a hot corner is already set up on your Mac. That's when you take your uh, cursor, drag it to the bottom right, and then a notes window pops up. But you can actually customize this and every corner of your Mac to do some sort of quick action. Again, this is all personal preference, but personally I set it up like this. So uh, normally if I drag my cursor to the bottom left, I will lock my screen. If I drag my cursor to the top left, I will start a screensaver. By dragging to the top right, that's when I can see my notifications. And then I actually like having the notes field pop up in the bottom right. So I just keep that exactly as it is. Okay, finally, let's go to the desktop so I can show you my favorite feature on Mac OS that I always enable because unlike this brand new M5 MacBook Pro, which is currently so free of clutter and looks so nice, uh, my desktop usually does not look like this. It looks like this. So as an unorganized person, I am glad that Mac OS has a feature that can automatically organize my desktop with stacks. To enable this, just right click the desktop, then select use stacks. And just like that, your cluttered Mac desktop will be neatly organized into categories. And then when you click on the categories, it will expand to show you all of the things in your desktop that are in that category. And from there, you can even organize how stacks work. So just right click the desktop again, then go to group stacks by, and from here you can see that you can organize them uh, by kind, which is the default setting, but you can also group them into various dates, like the date last open or the date uh, these were added, or you can be really organized and add your own tags and then customize your stacks by your uh, Mac OS tags. Speaking of customization, Mac OS Tahoe also makes it easier to customize folders. Now to do this, you're going to want to right click on a folder. If you don't have a folder, just right click on the desktop and then select new folder. Now right click on that folder, uh, then go down to customize folder. Now from here, you're gonna see that you can actually change the folder to different colors. And you can also add an emoji on top of it to help better organize your folders into different categories. And like always, you can actually set your own picture to any folder or app icon. To do this, right click on what you wanna change. So let's take that folder again. Then you're going to actually select get info. Now in this get info area, you're going to see an icon right here on the top left. And basically you're just going to take whatever photo you want you know, this folder to be. Uh, you're gonna take that photo and drag it right over that folder icon. And voila, look at that. The picture is now the folder icon. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? Isn't that so easy? Kind of makes you wonder why they didn't just add that as a option in the customization area. I guess, you know, maybe next time. All right, but those are all the first things you should do on your new MacBook Pro or Again, really any Mac that runs Mac OS Tahoe. And I really hope you learned something new or found this video helpful. If you did, please leave me a like, subscribe for more, and thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Was there a stain on this MacBook Pro the whole time in this video? Oh, bloody hell. How unprofessional.